the march in Washington allowed for the civil rights bills. The march in Washington allowed for the voting rights bill. The people had a singular experience. They had a sense that they were not alone and they could call on other people. And you know, the technologies that exist today to put a demonstration together, we did not have. And that is the responsibility of young people. Each generation will have to discover its mission and either fulfill that mission or betray it. This is a lifelong journey. We accomplished a lot of things in terms of changing this country, but we know it's not enough. And we know that if we are to carry on to make this country a better country, it is now on the shoulders of the young people to carry it on. And they now have to fulfill a mission. Hello everyone, I'm Congresswoman Karen Bass, proud to be chair of the Congressional Black Caucus, and here we are at the 57th anniversary of the March on Washington, still marching, still marching for issues that we have been working on for decades. The George Floyd Justice and Policing Act is languishing in the Senate. It will allow us to sue, fire, and prosecute officers, have a database of bad officers, these are the kind of transformative changes that need to take place so that we will stop having to march in our streets almost on a monthly basis because another person has been killed. While we march for Mr. Blake, we also march for Mr. Pellerin, who was killed in Louisiana, shot 11 times in his back. Mr. Blake might not ever walk again. We have to band together and continue to demand this change. We passed the bill on a bipartisan basis in the House. It is languishing in the Senate, and we need to raise the level of heat, raise the level of pressure so that Mitch McConnell puts the George Floyd Justice and Policing Act up for a vote in the U.S. Senate. Thank you so much. We're going to continue marching. We're going to continue fighting until we transform policing in the United States. Hi, my name is Tiffany Dina Lofton, and I serve as the National Director of Youth in College at the NAACP. 2020 has been teaching me a lot about love, the discipline and the practice. And so for the March on Washington, I decided I was going to write a love letter to my peers in the movement and to everyone else who identifies as a leader. Dear movement, working for revolution is not easy. It requires constant learning, constant criticism. It requires constant struggle and it requires constant transformation. In this work, there is sacrifice, pain. There is community, action. There is losing and winning. I want us to remain focused on the vision, the goal. All other rhetoric is a distraction that assists white supremacy in its reign. The vision does not belong to us. We are merely shepherds. The vision belongs to those who are a part of the eruptions. It belongs to those in our past and our future. We are responsible with the time that we have to choose to move closer to that vision. I think that revolution that we all want is inevitable. It is not conditional based off of egos or money, cancel culture, titles. It doesn't care about what we tweet or what we decide to wear. It only matters with whom and how we decide to build. So I wanna recommend we build these three things. First, I need us so desperately 
to build safety, to protect one another, to unapologetically fight and defend one another, all of us. There is not one type of black. There are many and they all deserve safety from white supremacy and even ourselves. It is happening and it all does not need to be brought to social media. It starts with each and every one of us in our immediate circles, in our schools, our homes, our churches. We must keep ourselves safe. Second, we need to build political maturity. I want us to meet people where they are, to be graceful, to be fishers, not hunters. I want us to keep the vision first and use every strategy that we can think of to obtain that vision. We do not need to compete because this is not a competition. And lastly, I want us to organize, organize, organize. Let's recognize that our relationships and our times are our two biggest gifts to that future vision. While we have both our responsibility and our consciousness, we must build politically conscious, socially responsible people and use our technology for the purpose of liberating and developing humanity. I'm here because I was called to be. I'm here because I fight for my family and my community. I'm here because I know what winning feels like. I know what the power of the people feels like. And I know that a revolution is not only possible, but necessary. I'm here because I love us. I hope you will join me and recommit yourselves to love and then work on protecting ourselves, growing in political maturity, and organizing everyone. I believe that we will win. Happy anniversary to the March on Washington. Greetings. My name is Kimberly Jeffries Leonard, and I am the national president of the Lynx Incorporated. On behalf of our over 16,000 members, I am honored to be here to participate in the 2020 virtual March on Washington. 57 years ago, some 250,000 people gathered in front of the Lincoln Memorial in Washington, D.C. for the March on Washington. My husband and my father-in-law were a part of this 250,000, and the powerful memory of this day will be with my husband forever. The goal of that march? To draw attention to the challenges and inequalities faced by African Americans. While much has changed since the 1960s, unfortunately, much has stayed the same. Today, we again find ourselves in a critical time. I assure you, the Lynx Incorporated has rolled up her sleeves and has been working. We have been and continue fighting on behalf of our communities of color who are disproportionately affected by health issues. We have been and continue fighting against the senseless and unjustified deaths of George Floyd and Breonna Taylor and so many other black men, women, and children. We have been and continue fighting on behalf of our children and generations yet unborn so that we may leave them with a country where they are valued, respected, and safe. We have been and continue fighting against voter suppression, expanding our voter registration and engagement efforts to ensure that all people, especially black and brown communities, are able to exercise their right to vote. We know that transforming communities starts with getting people to understand and exercise their civic responsibility and voting is chief among them. It is our primary weapon and we must wield this power in this country to make change. Our voice, our vote, our power will be heard. When Martin Luther King Jr. stood before the sea of people at the original March on Washington, he said, but we refuse to believe that the bank of justice is bankrupt. We refuse to believe that there are insufficient funds in the great vaults of opportunity of this nation. And so we've come to cash this check, a check that will give us upon demand the riches of freedom and the security of justice. As black women have consistently been trailblazers for social change, you will find the Lynx Incorporated standing at the bank with a check in hand. We will continue to fight to ensure the cultural and economic survival of African Americans and other persons of African ancestry. Our time is now. We must be heard.
Thank you. Hey guys, I'm Yvette Nicole Brown. Join me and other change makers to get out and vote on election day. Our lives depend on quality education, jobs that pay a living wage, and equal opportunities for our children. Our lives depend on healthy communities, access to clean air and water, and to live without the burden of crippling student debt. Our lives depend on fair laws in a country that cares about all its people, black, white, Hispanic, Asian, Native American, queer, trans, and straight. This election day, get out and vote because our lives depend on it. The March on Washington commemorates and celebrates a time when our voices were heard worldwide. John Lewis, at the age of 23, was the youngest to speak at the March on Washington. He, along with some dedicated leaders, participated in protests, sit-ins, and campaigns to fight for civil rights along the way. Fast forward to 2020, we lost the soul of consciousness in Representative John R. Lewis. However, his spirit remains. That spirit is the guiding force that not only encourages us to march, but to vote, even when it's inconvenient for us to do so. Empower our young people to speak their concerns without apology and get into some good trouble and demand policies specific to healthcare, fair and impartial policing, economic empowerment, and rally for equal access and equity in education. Today, we, the ladies of Sigma Gamma Rho, Sorority Incorporated stand on the shoulders of seven young women educators who bravely used their voices in 1922 to enable future generations, just as those who marched on Washington did. In 1963, a seed was sown, and today we recognize more than ever that it was sown on good ground. Let's do our part. Hello, I'm Steve Benjamin, the mayor of Columbia, South Carolina. I'm a past president of the United States Conference of Mayors and also a past president of the African American Mayors Association. More importantly, I'm a child of the movement that struck a crescendo nearly 60 years ago at the March on Washington at a critical moment in the history of the Republic. We are again at a critical moment in the history of the Republic, the greatest pandemic since 1918, the greatest economic disruption in election year since 1932, and yes, the greatest social unrest because of police violence and structural racism since 1968. We believe that the real test of leadership is how we respond in moments of crisis. We lean forward and take lessons from men and women who came before us, those who gave their blood, sweat, and tears, those who marched, cried, and died, and turned their moments into a movement. This is our moment to show that very same audacity. It's important that we stand up and we be counted in the census this year, that we come out in November and we vote in record numbers, that we stand up for the sanctity of the franchise and make sure that every single vote is counted, that we stand up and ensure equity as we reimagine safer communities free of violence. We've been blessed, brothers and sisters, by so many, so many seemingly ordinary people who've done extraordinary things that laid the foundation, the possibility for us to do the things that we're doing in both public and private life. This is how we continue to use the story of the African seed and the American sun as a true model of human potential. This is how we, with this exciting new generation of leaders in the vanguard, how we turn this pain and this passion into progress. Hi, my name is Melanie Campbell. I'm president and CEO of the National Coalition on Black Civic Participation and convener of the Black Women's Roundtable. It is my honor and pleasure to join you and all of my civil rights and social justice colleagues for the 57th anniversary of the March on Washington for Jobs and Freedom, as well as justice. And guess what? There's a lot we can do to achieve those things in today's society. And here's what you need to do. Make sure that you're counted in the 2020 census. If you hadn't filled it out, fill out that form, 
get it done and get it done today. Number two, 2020 election is just around the corner and we want to make sure that you vote ready. So ask yourself a question. Am I vote ready? Are you vote ready? And if you're not sure, go to unitycampaign.org and make sure that one, that you're registered to vote. And two, if you're not sure you've been voting, but just make sure there's a lot of folks trying to steal our vote out here. So make sure that you check it out and make sure that your vote hasn't been purged from the roads in your local community. And three, make sure you have a vote plan. Know when you're gonna vote and vote early if you can. Vote absentee ballot or, uh, and vote by mail. We know they're messing with the Postal Service trying to, to, to make sure that they can't do their jobs and move in the mail. So if you're afraid to do that, make sure you're ready to vote on November 3rd. But whatever you do, vote and make sure you're counted in the 2020 census. Because it is about jobs, justice, and freedom. It is about money, power, and respect. It is about achieving justice for, for, for Ahmaud Arbery and Breonna Taylor and George Floyd and so many others. It is about making sure that we can survive COVID-19 uh, and make sure that our children have an opportunity to not just survive, but to thrive and get an education and have good health care and have good quality of life. That's what's at stake in 2020. Vote and be counted. Join us for this call to action. Thank you. Hi, have you been counted in the 2020 census? Census numbers are used to determine federal funds for programs you and I care about. Like money for schools, roads, and hospitals. These numbers are also used to define district lines that influence who represents us in the halls of power. So get counted for the 2020 census. I'm counting on you. Visit NAACP.org for more information. My name is Garland Gilchrist, and I am the Lieutenant Governor of the state of Michigan. I am the highest ranking black elected official in the history of my state. But first and foremost, I am a black man, a husband, a father, a friend, a servant. Our nation and our world is facing a triad of existential threats, a global pandemic unlike anything we've seen in a century, economic calamity for the most vulnerable communities due to failed, cowardly leadership, and the call for racial justice in response to racist violence that is the loudest in a generation. It is clear that this reality is unsustainable and that in order for there to be any future possibility for black health, black wealth, and justice for all people, there is much work to be done. But nothing changes unless something changes. We are done dying, but we are never done trying. As we now commemorate the 57th anniversary of the historic March on Washington, we must remember and be inspired by the call to action that was given as a challenge to all of the people of our nation. We must recommit to an agenda that not only is inclusive, but is effective in delivering equity-based solutions for the black community and others that have been purposefully designed out of opportunity. And we must build the power to transform that agenda from proposals into policy. There are at least two tools available to us in 2020 to make this happen. The first is the census. Every single person must complete their census to ensure that the resources that are already ours are indeed available to our communities. The second is the vote. Our future depends on our people standing tall and making their voices and votes felt at the ballot box in November. We must take every possible action to protect and expand the right to vote. We are too powerful of people to leave any of our power on the table by not taking full advantage of both of these opportunities. If we do so to our fullest capacity, we will lay a foundation for a future that my three children will be able to experience that welcomes, respects, enables, and invests in their full potential and imagination.
I cannot wait to continue to do this work with all of you. Thank you, God bless you, and let's get to work. The vote is the most powerful nonviolent tool we have in the democratic society. We must not allow the power of the vote to be neutralized. We must never go back. One, two, three, four. Voting rights we're fighting for. Five, six, seven, eight. We cannot afford to wait. for the immediate, unconditional, and universal enfranchisement of the black man in every state in the union. Without it, his liberty is a mockery. Mary Church Terrell, 1912. What could be more absurd than to have one group of human beings who are denied rights working to prevent another group from obtaining those same rights? Dear Mark, we know that while it's necessary to say no to racial injustice, this must be followed by a positive program of action. The struggle for the right to vote, for economic uplift of the people. Fannie Lou Hamer, 1964. 1870, the 15th Amendment gave every man a chance to vote. And now it's 64, and they still trying to keep us away from the ballot. You say, honey, I'm behind you. Well, move. I don't want you back there. I want you to say, honey, I'm with you and we'll go up this freedom road together. It was more than 100 years ago Abraham Lincoln signed the Emancipation Proclamation. A century has passed since equality was promised and the Negro is not yet equal. The time for justice has now come. No force can hold it back. The sad irony of the court's decision today lies in its utter failure to grasp why the Voting Rights Act has proven effective. Throwing out pre-clearance when it has worked to stop discriminatory changes is like throwing away your umbrella in a rainstorm. My name is Shidua Day Kadri, and I'm the Chief Advocacy Officer of the New York City LGBT Center, a national partner of the NAACP. 
Each year, we see thousands of LGBTQ individuals and offer a myriad of social services, advocacy, and policy programming. In our policy and programming work, we center the needs, voices, and priorities of queer and trans people of color who have historically been disconnected from the hallways of power. We talk a lot about identity. And what I realize is that now more than ever, some individuals find those conversations to be divisive. But as a Black queer feminist, I look forward to the opportunity to talk about my identity, yours, and to celebrate them both. I want identity to be the lighthouse that guides us back to John Lewis's vision of a beloved community, where we can look each other in the eye and see each other's compassion, the struggles, and most importantly, our humanity, where we have the opportunity to let our most basic desires for life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness to be lifted off the pages of the Constitution and into this democracy, one that I acknowledge did not contemplate the mosaic of identities that now comprise it, nor did it recognize the loss and labor of those upon whose backs it was built. But that doesn't mean we cannot now stand up together to radically transform this space into what we want it to be. Many have carried water before us, and now it's our opportunity to pay it forward for the next generation. These times are unprecedented, but catalytic. Now we have the opportunity to move, to act, to evolve and transform this space into what we want it to be. So let us now link arms across identities, across movements, and march forward together to build the world we want to see. Thank you. I pray you and your loved ones are staying safe and healthy. 2020 has been a challenging year between the COVID-19 pandemic and the senseless murders of black men and women by police officers. I find myself constantly concerned for the safety and well-being of my family and loved ones. And despite the darkness and uncertainty brought about by these turbulent times, I continue to find my strength in knowing that I'm a member of a brotherhood of conscious men actively serving our communities, ready to take these challenges and effect change. There are multiple paths that support us bringing about change. Complete the census, so your community receives proper funding and resources. Get involved in advocacy work and write your local government officials about concerns you have. But most of all, make sure you go to the polls and cast your vote. Voting is a right and privilege we must exercise. As the late Honorable Brother John Lewis said, the vote is the most powerful nonviolent tool we have. The generations before ours fought to secure the right to vote, and we must use it to hold politicians accountable. Now more than ever, we must exercise our voting power at all elections. We are stronger when we rise up and speak out together. Now is the time to use your power. Hi, I'm Lorenz Tate. I want to let you in on a little secret. You have the power. The power of five. Right now, we need everyone to tap into their power. Do you know five people who you can help register new voters in your community? Let us know who they are. Together, we can fight for policies that respect and improve our communities. You can be an advocate for democracy and social justice. Help us change our country for the better with the power of five. Visit naacp.org or text POWER to 40649 for more information. Fifty-seven years ago, hundreds of thousands of Americans joined together in solidarity in peaceful protest, marching in our nation's capital. We have an obligation not just to recognize what an historic turning point this was for our country, but to recognize the work that led to that moment and the work that must continue ahead in our effort to fight for peace and justice, equality and opportunity for all. 
That means making sure that every one of our voices, every vote counts and matters as we continue our journey toward a more perfect union. Brothers and sisters, my name is Everett Kelly. I am the national president of the American Federation of Government Employees, AFGE, the largest union of federal and DC government workers. AFGE members have been on the front line supporting the entire agenda of the March on Washington from back in 1963 all the way through to the current moment. We've been part of the movement from the start. AFGE fights for voting rights, for full employment, living wages and pension. We fight for universal health care and housing and true equal justice under the law. Our members work throughout the federal and DC government providing services directly to our fellow Americans, social security checks, VA health care and clean air and water through the EPA. We help provide safe and affordable housing through HUD. We support the troops in DOD. We rescue folk doing emergencies through FEMA and help cure diseases at NIH and the CDC. AFG members carry out the census so that each of us get counted and so that we all have full political representation. We make sure that workplaces are safe and that all workers get paid everything that they are owed. The current administration have tried to crush our union and destroy the programs and agencies that employ our members and provide services to you. But we haven't let them. We have kept going and kept up the struggle for fairness and justice for a government that Americans can be proud of and one that Americans can trust. AFGE fully support the March on Washington and we'll be out there with you telling those that are in power to get your knee off our necks. Thank you. Shalom uvracha. Shalom. Hello and blessings. I am Rabbi Jonah Pesner, the director of the Religious Action Center and the senior vice president of the Union for Reform Judaism, the largest and most diverse denomination in Jewish life. And I am a proud national board member of the NAACP, the nation's largest and most historic civil rights organization. As we gather to commemorate the March on Washington. Let us hearken back and hear the words again of Rabbi Joachim Prinz, a survivor of the Holocaust who spoke at the original March on Washington. These were his words. When I was the rabbi of the Jewish community in Berlin under the Hitler regime, I learned many things. The most important thing that I learned under those tragic circumstances was that bigotry and hatred were not the most urgent problem, the most disgraceful and the most shameful and most tragic problem is silence. Friends, it is now 2020, and I wonder what Dr. King and Rabbi Prinz would say if they could see us here today and realize that we continue to confront a form of systemic racism, which is brutal, violent, and enduring. We are also living in a moment when democracy itself is under siege. And amidst it all, there continues to be far too much silence. There is the silence of those who refuse to cry out in rage against the radical inequality exposed by the COVID pandemic, the silence of those who can't seem to say that black lives matter, the silence of those who are silenced because of racist voter suppression. Together with partners like the NAACP, the Reform Jewish Movement is engaged in a massive national civic engagement campaign that we are calling Coal. Kolot, that's Hebrew, and it means every voice, every vote. It's a wonderful play on the Hebrew phrase because the same word in Hebrew, kol, can mean vote and voice. The insight of our ancient wisdom is that for our voices to be heard, 
our votes must be counted. So, as we commemorate the legacy of this March on Washington and all those who assembled for justice in our nation and our world, let us raise our voices. Let us demand an end to the policies and the practices of racism and bigotry and hate. Let us raise our voices to dismantle white supremacy, anti-Semitism, and anti-Muslim bigotry. And let us raise our voices in support of migrants and refugees and people who are poor and people who are suffering and all people who are vulnerable among us. Indeed, let us raise our voices in a song of justice and a hymn of love. And for our voices to be heard, let us ensure that every person votes and every vote is counted. Amen. Do democracy. Vote. You got it. Use it. Vote. Demand democracy. Advocate for criminal, social, and environmental justice for all. Engage in democracy. Run for office. You can be mayor, governor, president. Just run. Democracy is powered by people like you and me. Vote. Advocate. Engage. Visit NAACP.org or text DEMAND to 40649 for more information. Greetings to the millions of viewers, protesters, highly motivated, socially charged citizens, and also to the many organizations and, of course, our host, the NAACP. My name is Andre Manson. I'm the 22nd International Grand Polaris of Iota Phi Theta Fraternity Incorporated. And on behalf of our founders and the men of Iota Phi Theta Fraternity Incorporated, I'd like to say welcome. As we gather here for this historic 2020 virtual march on Washington to help actualize a dream brought to us by the great Dr. Martin Luther King Jr., introduced here on this stage in 1963. 1963 being a key year for IOTA, being founded in that year with the backdrop of the civil rights movement, the men of IOTA set out to not just create a bond of unique concept of brotherhood, but also to participate and get involved and search for the answers to the racial and economic crisis that affect our people and people of color. So I want to thank you all here for participating in this effort to make the much needed changes in our society. With the coronavirus and systemic racism ravishing our communities, we have to make our government hear, recognize, and act on our concerns. The men of IOTA believe that this election in 2020 is a major part of that focus. One of the many ways that we can achieve this goal is by mobilizing the black vote. So let's get out there early and influence those in our circles to get involved and participate in this election. Now is the time for us to come together, stand up, and be counted. We have seen from the efforts of many of you by marching and protesting and creating changes in our community from racist statues being removed from the streets and government buildings to companies taking a step back to see the effects and influences it has on our communities. So I want to say don't stop now. Keep up the momentum and remember our communities are counting on you. Thank you. <laughs>